to make sure that we give focus in terms of developing small businesses in all the three triangles that we're talking about. Whether you talk about the access to finances, the access to markets and the access to business development. And as a department, we came up with the NISET, which is the National Integrated uh, Small Enterprise Development Plan. And all of these plans are meant to do one thing, by taking a different shape to say we're not only looking at government, but looking into the entire SMMB ecosystem. The, the impact of, of, of the energy instability has really costed uh, the small businesses whether they want to operate, whether they're manufacturing, but they rely on the stability. And as the department, we're running different schemes, including the one that is looking at supporting small businesses with certain technologies. Others are already applying for the generators because they really want their businesses to, to, to be sustainable. But also on the different schemes that we're offering, like the technology transfer assistance program that is offered through CEDA, our, our business development agency, they're also able to order those. But what we're encouraging is that this requires innovations and it is only entrepreneurs that can, can innovate. All the time when we talk to entrepreneurs is to say, identify a problem and energy instability is a problem and therefore we're calling upon all our innovators to say bring a solution we need you to provide a solution not only to your sector but to the entire country and when you do that it means you can make better profits the golden triangle simply three things to deal with the red tape to deal with the access to markets and enhance the business development and look at addressing the financing of the sector but as you look at those three things, you're going to look at the issue of the red tapes. If you look at the time that we take to register business in South Africa, it's still really tedious. It takes long. Then you must still go to SARS and all the compliance that is required, which contributes to the red tapes. But as we look at that, because even those that are already in the space, then you'll find out that there's a challenge in terms of the access to markets, which is why we continue to engage with the big corporates to say, we've got to leverage on the Triple B Act. There's a component that talks to ESD. And if we utilize the ESD successfully, which talks to only 3% though, but we're saying if we can utilize that, then the SMMEs can be able at least to, to claim their own share in the economy. That's a start. Mm. But the second component is to make sure that government increases its own span towards, uh, towards uh, procurement that goes to SMMEs. Mm. As things stand, government only spends 1%. And we're not happy about that. We're not happy simply because the National Development Plan is very clear. Four jobs to be created in South Africa. Actually, it identifies 11 million jobs that must be created by 2030. And out of the 11 million, it says 9 million must come from small businesses. Mm. This means that government has a responsibility to look at the legislative environment. Government must also make sure that it really provides funding, especially for the developmental dividend, because nobody else will come on board and pay that. Mm. Other SMM is already on the space. They're just running short of the finances. The great news, as I mentioned, our NISTED plan, it has been recently approved by cabinet, as I said. So. From 2023, we're looking forward to not only government, but the entire ecosystem joining hands. Of course, this you must hear from the president. We will be launching our enterprise supplier development forum, wherein we have the big corporates coming together to say, these are our pledges towards uh, the development of small businesses and giving those small businesses an opportunity in their own value chain systems. But as we do that, we're still facing a big challenge. The funds that I'm talking about are still not fully utilized because mm. young people or other entrepreneurs are still battling to fill in the forms that we put there. Yes, we do We do understand that at times we come up with stringent criteria and this is something that we've tried to address to say at least let's lower that. Let's make sure that we enhance our business development system so that the interventions can talk to the state of SMMEs and cooperatives that we have. So as much as we do that, we say then there's a need for us to make sure that we really go all out, partner with everyone to help entrepreneurs understand the programs that we are running and how to apply for them. So those are the two things we are hoping that we'll be able to tap into the 10 billion rands uh, that is not fully utilized by the SOEs on the ESD, not from my department, but through the SOEs. We hopefully that everybody will come on board, as I said, the big corporates with about 40 billion rents that is not fully utilized, but at the center of it is when we are all ready, is when we are all coordinated and when we know how to collaborate. I think it is important that all the time government introduces uh, a program that is meant to intervene, especially on behalf of small businesses, 
is to first understand the ecosystem, understand the state of readiness of the SMMEs, because we can't continue to, in, to introduce certain criteria for people to access funds. As a result, they end up being excluded. Then you get to see those ones that are naughty, who will then exploit the opportunity, mm -hmm. because most of the businesses are not ready for that investment, or they are just put on the side because of the corrupt tendencies. But at least one thing we've agreed on as this government is to say we've got to fight against corruption. It is not only government that is pushing that. The ANC as a party, as a governing party, has really emphasized. We've set up some measures which now we're trying to make sure that at least they can be aligned with the constitution. And we have urged all those that are working in the public service to make sure that they declare their interests. You've had President Ramaphosa talking about the need for us to undergo lifestyle audits. And this will help. But also we say it takes two to two, two tango. There's the corruptor and there's the corruptee. We urge all South Africans who are tempted because they're looking for quick solutions, who are tempted to bribe our officials not to do so because this really exposes their weaknesses in the system and undermines the transformative agenda that we're trying to achieve. Therefore, we're calling upon all of you, dear South Africans, make sure that you work with our government to expose us when we are corrupt as much as you try to limit that so that everyone can get to benefit in the system that we are building. One of the critical things we have identified is that we really would like to build an inclusive economy. And building that inclusive economy, it means we've got to look at those that are in majority in the country. And as you correctly put it, it is young people and it is women. But we know as things stand, whether you go to the JSE listed company, only 6% is women owned. Whether you go on international trade, even on other domestic trades that we're talking about. So we said the first thing as the department that we must commit to is to say at least all our funds, all the schemes that we have, they must make sure that at least they target 40% of women owned businesses. Then we created a specific scheme for the young entrepreneurs to say we have launched the Youth Challenge Fund which says come all of you young people, just pitch your idea to us, do everything. We've set aside about 690 million rents that is looking at that. Remember as I talk about that one, there are other schemes that are not saying because you are young you're not going to be accommodated. Mm. It's just a standalone fund that we're saying this one is targeting youth own businesses but young people can also apply through our small manufacturing enterprise support program which provides funding of up to one, of, of about 15 million rents and also the township and rural enterprise program they call it trap it goes up to 1 million rents there's no discrimination you are young you are woman you are man you can apply for those but only on the youth challenge fund where we are saying young and young only well earlier on i spoke of a creation of the conducive environment and that lies on policy making. Now, if I was a wise business person or a wise investor, I wouldn't miss a conference of a governing party, because that's where the policy direction will be set. So that's the first benefit to you business people. But the second component is you being privy prior others to say who's likely to lead, because these policies that we develop ought to be matched by the relevant talent that must provide leadership. Now, you have an opportunity to interact with those people in terms of influencing and being able to say you know what as much as you looked at this policy but you have not looked at this blind spot which prohibits many of the businesses from being successful and grow your economy as the governing party so that you can be able to create more jobs that's something that I think business people should take interest in be active business people so that you can inform the direction a country takes